Welcome back everyone, I'm Tyler with Ligardi Products. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to install our urethane top coats. They add durability and scratch resistance to any surface and they come in gloss or a matte sheen. So I'm gonna go over how to install, how to mix our urethane top coats, whether you're doing gloss, matte, or even adding the, our grit additive for extreme durability. First things first, you, you'll notice we pulled the plastic. That's okay. This isn't gonna run off and flow like the epoxy. All you need to do is tape anywhere your roller's gonna touch, maybe your backsplash or the wall. And then if you don't have your counters overhanging enough, you're gonna wanna run a piece of tape, just one strip on your cabinets, just in case you hit them. Now this does clean up with water, so say you get a few drips on the floor, just wipe it up, not a big deal, but you'll see it's it's a, it's a very easy product to apply without having to tape and plastic anything off. So this is a great product for rejuvenating old countertops, existing countertops that maybe have wore down, scratched up, stuff like that. No matter whose product it is, this product can go over it and it's gonna shine it back up and make it look like new and add a lot of strength to it. So with that being said, we'll get started. I have all the pro, uh, supplies I need to apply it. I got gloves, a stir stick, uh, two ounces of water we'll be adding into this. We got our urethane here. This is gloss and then we have the grit additive and I'll kind of go over that, how you add that if you want to use that or if you've ordered it. And then a roller tray. We like to use a 3 8 nap roller. Make sure you de-shed it really good. And then obviously a paintbrush in case you have tight areas you can't get the roller in. So what I'm going to do first, we'll put on our gloves. And you don't have to have a measuring cup. These are already pre-measured, but you just want to make sure you have a 32 ounce uh, cup. It'll fit this in there just fine. So we'll start, we'll give this a little shake just in case anything's settled. I always like to pour the part A in first. So we'll pour the part A in here. Get as much of that out as we can. Once it's not a steady stream and starts dripping, that's usually enough time of letting it drain out. Now we're gonna add the B, give that just a little shake here. And since this is the, the hardener, the thicker part, I'm gonna be adding the two ounces of water into here. So we don't necessarily need to wait for this to drain out, get the majority of it out. And then we'll add two ounces of water into the part B after we poured it out and then we'll shake that up that'll get all the leftover part B that's in there then this mix is really easy so we can mix it with the paddle or a, a stir stick really simple to mix we want to scrape the sides as we're mixing Scrape that bottom, get in the corners there, the bottom corners. And we'll mix this for about two minutes, two to three minutes. Scraping the sides as we're mixing. So if you guys were gonna add the grit, say you purchased the grit, you wanted to add durability, extreme scratch resistant to it, you would start dumping this slowly into the urethane um, as you're mixing it about right now. And that, that goes for gloss or matte. So if you ordered matte, you mix it the same exact way. If you added grit with the matte, you would add it after you started mixing it just like I did here. So what I'll do on these tops to kind of show you guys all the options is I'll do, I'll do gloss on this back half I'll do matte urethane out here, and then I'll do uh, gloss with grit on the back here. So the little, little counter will show you what the grit additive looks like. But again, doesn't matter if you order gloss or matte, you're gonna mix them both the exact same way. They're both gonna need two ounces of clean cold water. And then you would just add the grit right about now as you're mixing it, um, if you ordered that as well. Now, if you guys epoxied, you really want to apply the urethane within 24 
uh, hours of applying your epoxy coat. So if you have waited past that, it's good to scuff up the surface with 220 grit sanding uh, pads or higher. Um, and if you guys are sanding, just be careful on your faces, your edges, usually do those by hand. You don't wanna hit a palm sander on there. Palm sand the top's not an issue because it goes on so much thicker. But just try to do your epoxy and then do your top coat the next day. That's the best application for this process. Um, and that's gonna get you the best bond. But again, sometimes you just, you can't do it the next day. So just scuff that surface up a little and then clean it really well. And then you can apply the, the urethane without any issues. So we're ready to go. So got the roller tray here. And again, I'll do this back gloss. This will be our matte urethane. And then we'll do gloss back here with the grit additive. So we're just gonna pour, and this is for 50 square feet. So we're not gonna need all this since we're doing different spots on each counter. I always like to take a second, kind of really soak the roller up. If you just barely dip it and go roll it out, it's gonna be dry in the middle and you won't get as good coverage. So just take a minute, soak this up really good. Kind of rub that into the roller. And then all we're gonna do, we're gonna roll past down the middle and I'm only gonna be doing two, three foot sections at a time. That way I have enough time to roll it out really good, do my final back roll, hit my faces. You never wanna to try to do too much in one, one dip or before you do your final back roll. So I like to just take a minute, roll it out really quick, make sure we got a good even coat everywhere. And then once I'm done with the top, I'll hit the, the faces. Make sure you hit your top corners. And then once we're done, I always like to roll on the top a little, even out my roller, get it nice and flat again. And then we just do a final back roll. And I'm not applying any pressure. I'm just making sure I don't have any thick roller edges, thick roller lines. And then I always like to get back, look at the different angles. Make sure there's no thick spots, missed spots, anything like that. And then we just kind of move on. Redip. And then do about the same width again. Always make sure you overlap a little bit into the previous section. Flatten that roller out after doing your faces. And then back roll it. Now if your rollers are leaving thick edges when you're doing your back roll, just press some of that out. Tilt it and press some of that edge out and it'll get that edge thinned out to where when you do your back roll, it'll really feather it out really nice. So if you have a lot, if you're getting lines and stuff from too much product on your edge, tilt it, roll some of that, push it off, and then finish your back rolls. All right, so a few things. Like I said, always check your sections when after you get a section done, make sure everything's hit, no thick spots. Because even this took, this took about, I don't know, 10 minutes, eight minutes. I wouldn't want to come back here and try to roll out a thick roller edge because it's gonna, it's gonna look, you're gonna see exactly where you rolled on the top. So always double check your sections before you move on. Because if you want to do something to them, re-roll a spot, you can do it right away, but you never want to go back and hit anything. So like I said, it's always good to roll a section, look at it and then move on, make sure everything's good. So what I'll do now, I'll add some grit to the urethane. We can roll this one out. So this will be the gloss with the grit additive. Now, when you add the grit to the gloss, it will dull the sheen down. So it's not going to be as high of gloss as this. It will still have a little teeny bit of gloss to it. Um, if you add the matte 
if you add the grit to the matte, it's, it's not going to affect it. It's just going to be a matte finish, no gloss at all. So you will get a little bit of gloss, even though you add the grit to the gloss, but just keep that in mind. So when you're adding grit to the gloss, it's going to dull that, that sheen down a little bit, and it's not going to be as high gloss as, as without the grit. And you guys will be able to see it once I put them both down. All right, so I added the grit additive to the leftover urethane gloss that I had. It's about 2.5 grams per ounce of urethane. So I had 10 ounces here of urethane. I added 25 grams of the grit. Um, and so this is gonna give me the gloss urethane with the grit additive. And I'm gonna do that on the little one back here so you guys can see the difference. Now again, like I said before, the mat, adding the grit to the mat doesn't change the sheen at all. It just dull no matter what, super, super cool. So this will affect the gloss sheen a little bit and tone it down. And you guys will kind of see, be able to see once it's applied. So got a new roller, de-shedded it. We're just gonna sit here and soak this up for a minute. So if you guys order the counter kit, you don't have to break this down. What comes, the amount of grit that comes with it is for the counter kit urethane. So this would just go with the whole urethane. Again, if you're doing stuff like this or say you're splitting the kit in half, um, you would just do 2.5 grams per ounce of however much urethane you make. That's a simple way to, to do the math to know you're getting the correct amount of the grit additive in there. All right, so small counter. I only need to probably do one dip on it and I can coat the whole thing. So we apply it the same exact way. Roll down the middle, cross roll. Get this top all done before I do my faces. So we get our corners. And again, I got an end in on the roller, so I want to roll that flat before I do my final back rolls. And we'll do our final back roll. Just nice and light, making sure we're not leaving any roller lines, any thick spots. And that's it. Again, guys, you want to double check, like I got a missed corner here. This is why you always go around and double check. Before you move on, make sure everything's been hit. All right, so now I'm gonna do the, the matte urethane. And again, guys, whether it's gloss or matte, you're gonna mix them the exact same. If you're adding grit, you're gonna add it the same way. So it doesn't matter. So I've already mixed this up just like I did the gloss. And now we're gonna apply it same exact way. So the gloss and the matte are applied the same exact way. You mix them the same exact way. The only difference you're gonna get are the, the sheens from a gloss to a matte. So we're using the 3 snap roller again. New roller, de-shedded it. And then we're gonna do the same exact process. Roll down the middle, cross roll. We're gonna get our top done, and then we're gonna do our faces. And again, I'm not worried about roller lines up top here, because I'm st Still got to do my faces, my edges, and then I'll come back and make the top look good. Make sure I flatten that roller off before I do my final back rolls. And then just nice and light. So again guys, same exact process as doing the gloss or even the adding the grit additive. You apply it all the same exact way. The difference is the sheens that you're gonna get. So I'll continue this process over the rest of this island.
So again, guys, make sure you're, you're double checking um, every time you do a section, get at different angles, make sure everything's been hit. Um, so this will go from gloss to super low sheen. So instead of honing or sanding countertops, you can apply our matte urethane and it's gonna give you that same exact look in just a matter of minutes. So this is a really cool product, extremely popular. And not only does it add durability and strength, it also is 100% UV stable. So it's gonna protect those counters from harmful UV rays, stuff like that. Just an absolute awesome product. So as you can see, we didn't drip anywhere. It didn't run off the counter. So that's why a lot of contractors will come in after doing the epoxy coat, come in the next day, peel everything, clean everything up, one, run one strip of tape, urethane top coat it, and then they can just peel their tape off when they're done and they don't have to come back on the job and clean everything up so they can be done that day. So it makes it really nice doing the urethanes. But when you guys are doing the matte urethane, you really need to be doing two coats over a, a glossy epoxy surface. Now say you sanded the top real quick because you had imperfections, you could get away with one coat. But if you look closely, you can kind of see some glossy specks right throughout this top. So that second coat will completely hide all those. So what we've done is we coated this, we pulled the tape off of those, and you can apply your second coat the same day. So once it goes, the whiteness goes away and it goes clear, kind of like this, you can apply that second coat. So you don't have to wait 24 hours or the next day. That's the benefit of our urethanes, and that goes for the gloss as well. If you want to do two coats, you can do that within an hour, hour and a half, or once it goes like a clear finish. So you don't want to go over it when it's still milky white, kind of let that dry out. It's usually about an hour, hour and a half. Um, and you guys can do your second coat on it. Gonna do that second coat. And the second coat will go farther than the first coat. So just kind of keep that in mind. You kind of see how much I'm getting coated, coated with one pass here. and we just apply it the exact same way. Roll out the top, hit our edges, and then move on. Always make sure you get these corners. And then we'll flatten off our roller. And do our final back rolls. That's it guys, so there's our second coat. When this dries out, you won't see any of those little glossy specks in the surface. And I'll just wipe up these drips with a, a damp rag with water. Um, pretty simple. So we'll show you guys this when everything's nice and dry. We'll do a little walkthrough for you. So I'm gonna go over a few FAQs for you guys on our urethanes. Uh, the first one is, how long do I gotta wait before I can install my sink or I can use my countertops? We like to give it 24 to 48 hours before you guys install the sink or start using your counters. Just keep in mind, it's not gonna be fully cured at its hardest point until seven days. So within that seven days, you don't wanna be dragging stuff across it, being crazy on your countertops, just kinda, kinda baby them there for those seven days, but it's not a problem using them, cooking, you know, stuff like that. Um, another thing we get asked is, can I set hot stuff on there? Hot plates, hot pans, stuff like that. Yes, you can, it's rated for high heat, but we don't recommend it. We want you guys to take, treat your countertops like they're a high-end countertop, use hot pads, use cutting boards, stuff like that. The other thing we get asked, is it UV stable? Does it protect the countertops? Yes, our urethanes protect the countertops extremely well. Not only do they add a lot of durability and scratch resistant, they are 100% UV stable. So they're not gonna discolor, they're gonna protect your counters from um, ambering over time, from UV rays, stuff like that. That's the process from beginning to end of installing our urethane top coats, whether it's gloss, matte, or our grid additive. If you guys have any questions, shoot us an email at customerservice at ligari.com or give us a call, and we look forward to seeing what you can do with Ligari products.